Hi guys, I want to take a minute to talk about immediate complete dentures while well, I've got a case I'm in the middle of here. So I got a patient who's got, uh, had had a full mouth reconstruction, uh, six unit anterior bridge where it, uh, patient's natural tooth was set, uh, happened to be positioned more in the middle of the face, so the midline was way off. And uh, basically it's all failing, which is too bad but it's to the point of a uh, patient needs a complete denture. So we're gonna be doing full mouth extractions on this arch. Okay. And then the denture is gonna be placed immediately so they don't have to go without teeth while that ridge resorbs. Okay. So it, it was positioned. So they're, because it's, the patient has all their teeth, okay, basically it was like, like this. Right, where that, you can see where the midline is off. And uh, we can't try anything in, but our mounting is accurate because they've got all their, all their teeth. All right. So what we're gonna do is surgerize the cast okay, a little at a time and place denture teeth where the natural teeth were with the exception of making some corrections. So what I've done is set half of it. Okay by surgerizing the cast, by grinding off the teeth and not taking away any more bone than the teeth. In this case, there are not big undercuts in the ridge. We've got some small ones. And what I've done is basically ground the teeth off the cast on this half of the arch, keeping the adjacent central so that I know how far facially to place the teeth and the incisal length. Okay. I've corrected the midline, which is why my, my number nine is positioned over. Okay. So if I get, uh, if I take this pin out of here, we might be able to see it a little better. Okay, like that. So that's our midline, our corrected midline. I'm maintaining the incisal length. Okay, I've raised up patient's left side a millimeter as requested by the doctor from where the bridge was a little little canted on that side so we're correcting for that okay. so now that I've got that positioned I'm going to grind off the teeth on the patient's right side and I'll set those denture teeth right against the cast so there's no triad or no base because there's nothing that could be tried in since the patient still has all these teeth okay. Now, when I surgerize the cast, I'm going to take away the teeth and not the soft tissue area. So when you draw, draw your line, I draw my red line around these teeth, it makes two marks, one on the tooth and one on the tissue. Okay? And I'm going to take away the teeth and I'm going to leave the soft tissue. Now, if the patient had big undercuts in their ridge and we need to have the surgeon do alveoloplasty and remove bone, then I'd remove it off the cast and we would make a surgical guide to guide him. But in this case, we don't have big undercuts. I'm only gonna take off the teeth. And I don't wanna take away the, the bony areas because if I do, and the denture and the oral surgeon does not, the denture is not gonna seat. If I'm conservative, then the denture will always seat. And the surgeons don't, they're not gonna to wanna to be getting out PIP paste and trying to figure out why this denture isn't going in right after all these extractions and sutures and all that. So, so next I'll grind these teeth off and then I'll have to do a significant amount of grinding on the denture teeth themselves, and I'll set those right on the cast, and then we'll uh, festoon around it and process it. Okay, I'm gonna grind these teeth off. I'm gonna take away the teeth and not the bone.
and I can take away a little bit of interdental papilla in between the teeth so I don't have a big scalloped ridge form. But otherwise I want to be pretty conservative. Okay, so now I'm going to set the central in this whole side. But because there's a big root portion of this tooth, which we don't have room for because the ridge is not resorbed, I have to grind that off of there. And I'm going to grind it right up to the cervical line. I'm going to do some grinding off the back of this in order to get it into position properly. And once I get it into position, then I'll seal it down. And go on to the lateral. And I may have to slide that out a little bit, but that's the idea. Okay, so I got the rest of the setup done. Uh, set the teeth directly on the cast. Both sides of the arch, adjusted my centrals, my central a little bit more. Uh, dealing with kind of an asymmetrical arch on this anyway. But uh, doctor approved it, it's the way, that, uh, the way we wanted it. So from here I'm going to just uh, add wax uh, and festoon all the gingival contours, put it in the palette, and then we will process it uh, into acrylic. At that time I'll duplicate the uh, bare cast and make a surgical guide so that the surgeon, uh, once he knows that that clear surgical guide fits, then this denture will fit. Um, though it shouldn't take much because we didn't reduce any excess of bone. We basically just took the teeth off. So that's it. I'll show you more later. Okay, so I've got this finished this set up and I've got it waxed and festooned to get it ready for processing. Okay. Um, got some fairly heavy festooning though because the ridge is not resorbed we don't have a lot of extra room for thickness. We're not replacing soft tissue yet since everything is not resorbed so we're basically everything that we're adding in except for the teeth is uh, extra acrylic. So it's going to be a fairly thin denture initially until it gets relined after the ridge has resorbed. Put in a preformed pallet, uh, pallet of rugae. Um, because the patient has not been wearing anything, if they've been wearing a denture that had a smooth pallet, they wouldn't like it. Um, but immediate, uh, it may help in their speech a little bit. So we'll put that in there. So next I'll separate it from the mounting uh, plaster and then flask it, boil it out, pack it, and duplicate it for a clear surgical guide. Okay, so now I've flasked and boiled out this uh, waxed up immediate denture after it was, uh, all the festooning was done. And this is where the original wax up was and went around with the denture teeth coming out of it. Pour the second pour 
over the denture teeth. And so what you're seeing here is the underside of those teeth. Okay. And that's how it all went together before we boiled out and removed all the wax. So now I've got a nice bare cast here that's clean, no wax on it, no blackout wax. And I'm going to duplicate it for a surgical guide. So because I did some extra reduction in this large undercut area where I had to set a denture tooth over that uh, canine eminence, I can trim some more of that now if I want. I can smooth out or augment the ridge or remove large undercuts if they uh, we decide they're necessary. Uh, before I duplicate this cast, everything that I do reduce is still going to be filled in with acrylic, so the final denture is going to process the same way. Okay, there's, so there's a couple different ways we can duplicate this cast. One is to take a stock, play a rim lock impression tray with alginate, and just impression it and pour that up, and then we will wax it up and process that. Or I can use a second flask half okay, that fits on here and I can pour alginate in here and fill this up and put the cover on and then pull it apart and pour that up okay. or I can use VPS a little more expensive as far as materials go but I can take an impression of this with uh, putty and wash and uh, after that set I can put this on and fill the rest of it with plaster then I can pull it apart and pull that up and I could do multiple floors if I wanted to one to fabricate the surgical guide on and maybe another one to show, show the surgeon where where we uh, want the bone trimmed away because this cast is going to get destroyed in processing the denture is not going to come off of this because of the undercuts unless we would break the denture and we don't want to do that so we would, we're going to break the cast or we're going to shell blast this whole cast out of the inside of the denture so it's going to get destroyed in processing so we'd like to have uh, we're going to use a different cast to fabricate the clear surgical guide which is going to help the surgeon know it's going to be an exact copy of the intaglio of our final denture and the surgeon can take that clear guide, put it in the mouth, it'll show him where bone needs to be trimmed, it can take it off, trim bone. Once he gets that to seat all the way, then we know that the final denture is going to seat because it's an exact copy of the intaglio. Okay, so now I've uh, taken an impression of, our, of my cast okay, here, separated it out in the second half of the flask. So this is my master cast. This is what will get processed with the with the final denture set up. I'll pour up the duplicate cast in here by using this part of the second flask, pouring my cast in here. Once that's set up, I can remove it all. I'll have my duplicate cast. Then I'm gonna wax it up, wax up uh, basically one sheet of base plate wax that's going to uh, be the pattern for my surgical guide. This is my clear PMMA methamethacrylate acrylic that I'm going to use to make this surgical guide. I mixed it up about five minutes ago with powder and liquid. This is heat cured, not self curing. Okay, I get it to a doughy consistency. I'm going to apply it to my duplicate cast. Okay, and I'm going to put the other half together. It goes in the press, and the excess acrylic is going to come out. This one over here is the pink fibered actual denture that we processed. That's going to come out of the press. Once that's not coming out anymore, then we're going to take it out. We put it in a compress, this here, to hold the halves together. And it goes in the curing tank at 165 degrees for overnight. And tomorrow morning I will take them out, divest them, and do all the finishing and polishing.